Continue from our previous video. Uh, so here is our bootstrap simulation result. Uh, so with the gestational days is 300, the pregnancy days 300, we get our birth weight is with 95% confidence between uh, about 129 to 133. Uh, so the exact value here is 128.88 uh, is the 2.5%. Um, percentile. Okay, so then the 97.5% is 132.75. So you can see in this, under this 95% confidence interval, the width, the range is about 3.876. So that's earlier we say, right? When we try to provide the prediction value for a given x, Instead of we just plug into our regression line to give it exact one value. You can see here with the confidence interval, we give more better um, input. So you can see when we say, oh, the birthday is about 300. So what kind of baby weight we are expecting? Instead, we only say 130. Then we can give them a provide a range. So that's better fit for the real life. Right, so the real life, you won't have exactly one pregnancy date, exactly have one value for the baby weight. So instead, they will have a range. And also, we give them a good interval with the 95% confidence interval. Okay, so that's our example how to calculate and give the prediction interval. So we're still using the bootstrap to resample our data many, many times. So continue back to see here for our predictions. Okay, so our prediction, yes, you can provide one X value. Then we give you a prediction interval. But according to different value of X, uh, actually here we want to show you, uh, since we earlier we see, we talk about regression model. So on the other hand, that's me, Y is correlated with X. So the predicted value of y also depends on the input of x. So this actually makes what? The width of prediction interval also depends on the x. How they depends on the x? Uh, if you remember here, we show you the example. Okay, we give the, the prediction interval. We just run bootstrap resample 10 times. So here from the x equal to 2 on 91 okay so then 300 then 309 we can see the interval actually become bigger and also we show you the average for our x is about 280 so that's why here our average for the x is about here so that's why earlier we told you the prediction interval for different x value, they actually still related, related to the x. It's the width of the prediction interval. How they related on the interval are wider for the value of x that are further away from the mean. So that's we can see uh, from the picture, uh, from the graph here we show you because the mean is here. So then they are further away for the interval. They are wider interval. Or uh, you can see from this one, uh, that's the mean we have, right? So you can see they spread out the confidence, uh, spread out the interval from they are further, okay? No matter you go right or left. So that's our prediction intervals. Okay, so continue, uh, since we have the prediction interval, so also we want to talk about our true slope. It's possible we also can uh, illustrate the confidence interval for our true slope. Now the answer is yes, right? Because one thing is, we just say there's, there is a true line. But this true line, what is the slope? We can through the regression line to find the slope for the regression line. But we still doesn't know what is the true uh, the slope for the true line. That means true slope. So on the other hand, since we have the 
prediction interval for our um, uh, given x. So we can have our confidence interval for our true slope as well. So that you can guess, yeah, what, how we get the interval for the true slope, right? We perform our bootstrap again. So then for each uh, resample, we find the slope of regression line. Then we repeat. So once we repeat many, many times for our resample, we draw the empirical histogram. So for all the um, predict slope we have, then we get 95% interval. So then we can get our confidence interval for the slope for the true line. Yeah, so you can guess when we do our demonstration, that will be very similar to our prediction interval. Yeah, so that's the our uh, interval for our true slope. Uh, so the first thing, of course, let's get our scatter plot. So we're still using the baby weight uh, and the pregnancy date. Okay, so then we can find our slope. Yeah, so that's find our slope. Okay, so that's just one slope according to our uh, sample data. So we define one bootstrap slope. Uh, so this one, the same thing that we will just perform many times. Uh, we still do 2,500 times. We still have the input for our sample data, our X column and Y column. So then, of course, we need to have an array to get all the slope we get. We just need to do 25 times. So each time, right, we just resample our data. So then we got our slope. Are we passing the new sample data? Then we're still passing the x and y. So after we got a new slope, we just add into our slope array. So again, after that, we can plug our histogram. Uh, but then we need to have our 95% confidence interval. So we find the 2.5% and 97.5%. Uh, so yeah, let me run first. Yeah, because we know 25, uh, 2,500 time is a long time. Okay. So that's why uh, later we will get um, that's a histogram. So then we will mark uh, that's 95% uh, interval. Okay. So to show you the range for our slope. Okay, so, oh, sorry, we need to run here, yeah. So yeah, that will take a while. So the same thing, uh, you can uh, run from your sample demo file as well. Okay, so then we will see how our slope will look like. Uh, for one time, our slope is 0 0.5, almost 0 0.53, uh, almost 0 0.53, okay, see, they're done, okay. So then after we simulate 25 times, 2,500 times, okay? So the slope of regression line, uh, so that's our <coughs> original one, okay? So then between that 95% confidence interval, okay? So they are between 0.45 to 0.616. So that's about, yeah, 0.15% different. Yeah, not 0.15%, it's 0.15 slope different. Okay, so here the regression line, this one just a regression line. It's not the true slope. And we just know the true slope with the 95% confidence interval. We think they are fall into here. So that's our confidence interval for our slope. Uh, for the true slope, yeah, actually we can provide a range as well. Okay, so one thing is we always try to think about our true slope. Okay. So sometimes we'll think about when we observe a slope based on our sample point, okay? Like earlier, we have this one, okay? So if we just see the regression line like this, okay? So we have one slope, but then we was thinking about what if the sample scatter plot the slope just by chance? So that's why, see, we can either give you the confidence interval for our true slope. But also, what if the true, the true line actually is flat? Uh, what do you mean flat? Yeah, flat, that means that's, that's a, like at exit. So when we have those kind of questions, can we test whether there really 
has a slope. On the other hand, your null hypothesis, we will say the slope of true line is zero. Okay, so then we have alternative, the hy null hypothesis. You, say, you can say no, it's not, or it's greater than zero or less than zero, as long as yeah, they are different as the null hypothesis. Can we pr um, try to see we can accept or reject our null hypothesis? Yes, we can, right? Because just like earlier we showed you, we can construct a bootstrap confidence interval for the true slope. So after we got that interval, if this interval contains zero, oh, sorry, doesn't contain zero, for contains zero, we accept, we don't reject the null hypothesis. But if they didn't contain zero, then we will reject the null hypothesis. So this one, the example actually is not only for the true slope is equal to zero. You can use for any true slope. You can say the true slope is 0.5. Okay, so then the alternative hypothesis will be, no, it's not. So how to do our hypothesis testing? We just need to construct the bootstrap confidence interval. So that's we do the simulation uh, many, many times. Then we get our histogram. We have our 95% interval. If that 95% interval contain the slope we in the null hypothesis, then we don't reject the null hypothesis. On the other hand, we reject the null hypothesis. Yeah, so then how to do that? We see the demo. Yeah, so uh, we just see the demo using this example. Yeah, we still get our birth table. Yeah, we're using the mom's age and the birth weight. Uh, because remember in this scatter plot, yeah, we kind of a little bit doesn't know how the regression line will look like, right? So then we try to run the slope. Okay, so then we got uh, the slope actually is 0.095. Is kind of less than 0.1. So then we kind of think about, mm, is this slope? We do have the slope or not. Okay, so then if we really graph the feed line, yeah, this slope kind of really small, almost like zero. So that's why we can now to want to think, is the true slope is zero or not? So that's we have our no hypothesis. Okay, so how to do our no hypothesis, um, the hypothesis testing, right? So we just need to plug in back to our the bootstrap slope function we defined earlier, right? Uh, so then we pass in the birth uh, table, but here the x is mom's age, so y is the baby weight. Okay, so that's repeat twenty five times, twenty five hundred times. Okay. So that's why here, uh, that's wrong again here. Okay, so we do the bootstrap. We try to illustrate our ninety-five percent confidence interval for our slope. So that's here is our hypothesis. Okay, so if that ninety-five percent interval include the slope zero, then we don't reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so that's the our result. So actually, our result is between point negative one to point two. Uh, so still, that's about um, point three in the interval. But one thing is, in this 95% confidence interval, yeah, we do including the slope equal to zero. Yeah, so that's why here we will not reject our null hypothesis. Okay. So this is our regression inference, our lecture 32. And from here, that's what I said earlier in the beginning of the lecture. That's our last lecture about the regression. And that's actually is our last example about the null hypothesis. So we, uh, we, we have one more lecture actually that's about, uh, talk about the data privacy in this week. But next week actually is our last lecture week. Uh, we do the classification. So then that's module 13, right? So then you say, 
if that's the last one, so how about the module uh, 14 and 15? So in module 14, yeah, I just want to quickly to show you what, yeah, just want to quickly show you we finish module 12. Uh, so that's all for our regression part. So the last week, module 13 actually is our last lecture. Uh, so we will finish about the classification. So then our module 14, we don't talk about new lecture. Uh, so, but here we have two lectures, we will talk about the case study. Uh, so that's two examples we want to provide you. And uh, our module 15 will open a little earlier uh, because module 14, module 15 will be your final data science project, our project three. Uh, so then I want to give you more time to work on that. So then our module 16 is our final exam. Okay, so that's for our, uh, this semester lecture about the modules.